Hi. So I had an opportunity to talk about uh, or give my feedback about SLDDA, Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, and how it can be friendly with with the tourism uh, stakeholders like me. So unfortunately, lots of comments were very, I would say negative, which is, I believe is true because I think the whole connection between SLTDA or tourism authorities and the tourism stakeholders, especially smallholder stakeholders like us is very fiction. So when I came into tourism, even before I came into tourism, I never really had a good uh, impression about it. This is even before I even worked with any foreigner. And then now I have tons of friends in SLTDA or tourism departments, but I, my impression to it, it's still not that great. And I'm not even registered on SLTDA and I don't know why should I register on SLTDA because as an entrepreneur, if, if what I'm doing doesn't give me value, there's no point. So just looking at it because SLTDA itself has done lots of good work, especially with the COVID times, but there is sort of an inherent problem. So if you don't talk about these inherent problems in a sort of diplomatic, in a con conversational way, we can't solve these problems. So the way, the way I see it, first of all, uh, we have a big miscommunication. So SLTDA for us is our tourism uh, authority. I, I know there are few authorities. I know there's pr promotional bureau, development, there's uh, for conventions, all these things. For a tourism person, I don't really care you're promoting or you are conventional or you are, a, you are the tourism ministry. I need a one organization that I can go and call and talk and get my problem solves. I don't want a place to go and then I'm saying that oh, I'm bringing dollars to you. I'm bringing uh, wealth to this country and then I'm going to go there and say that oh no this is not our avenue. This is not our avenue. I don't want that. That's one of the things that uh, our industry is away from. Look at it things like Sigiriya. So I go to Sigiriya and if something happened uh, it might be managed by the Cultural Development Authority or the, when, the, when the Ministry areas change, it might be the his, uh, sorry, Historical or Education Department. And then there are no clue about that. Their, their priority is on to a tourist. I mean, they're happy to get the, the money back, money that we are generating. I'm not saying it in, in a very bad way, but in, in a digestible way for everybody. So we need as a, a tourism authority to be a very powerful uh, sort of a one-stop solution for us so that I think the first thing so for, for my eyes SLDDA is not a powerful organization it does not have the backing or back power to back us as a tourism professionals so it needs to be a powerful organization it because tourism is the industry that going to rebound Sri Lanka and then we are even though we are small uh, businesses we are generating so much wealth to this country and then we are promoting Sri Lanka in an in amazing way so we need a powerful organization to back us and then other another the next thing that I think SLTDA or tourism organization got it wrong is they are trying to be this enforcer uh, lots of uh, I know with COVID time there were a lot of people got uh, renewed their license and I'm pretty sure there are nobody's gonna renew sorry a lot of people will not renew their license uh, after now because SLTDA try to play this enforcer role they are trying to say that you need to do this you need to do this you need to get this you need to get this as somebody who lives in a democratic way country in a open society I don't want somebody to come and say to me that you need to do this, you need to do this in a different way because that will already create a frictions. Communication is very, very good. You need to have SLTA license, you need to have guide license, but you need to communicate in a way that by getting these, you are getting a value addition. So communication is great. So you have to go from enforcer to a value editor or a friend of the industry. So that sort of a 
image building process is something that I think SLDD needs to do. Uh, having uh, sending people rather than stuck in Colombo, sending people up to places like Knuckles or Pasikudaj, do a road trips, you know, send your staff uh, around places like, you know, I'm a hiking guide, take, you know, rather than I'm going there and doing a presentation or something, you know, send some of your people. If Adventure Tourism is one of the avenues that uh, uh, you are focusing on, send some of them, take them on a hike, see the, the, the real thing, and then, then they could then understand the the difficulty or the the sense of operation that we are doing so so rather than being an enforcer you have to be a value editor of the industry so you have to be the friend of the industry rather than the uh, the, the big brother of the industry so nobody likes big brothers so so that is the next point and then the the third point is innovation tourism is changing rapidly with the world with the, the demand so I provide and lots of people even that uh, the, the meeting that I had was innovators so this is the problem with bureaucracy so I know in SLDD and there is some amazing people but the problem is with every successful government every new minister every new chairman all these systems get changed so if I was in SLDD and then I'm doing some amazing work with all the hiking and everything and then I'm the innovative guy and then I put all the, all these papers into the whole bureaucratic system and it'll take so much time and then uh, the chairman change and then the chairman would come and say that oh we are not going to focus we're going to focus on uh, uh, cruise ships and whatever and then I'm like what the hell so you need you have already amazing bunch of people who has innovative abilities but the bureaucratic system tend not to favor innovation. And the same thing is has to do with favorism, right? Every government, if I'm a UPFA guy, it doesn't matter that uh, how amazing I am, but I might get sidelined or I even get penalized for my political viewpoints or who I was with. So that is also another problem of innovation. So in that sense, if you really want to take care of your job, the logical thing that even if I was a very creative person in the tourism industry, if I had a job in SLDD, I just do my job. Just I don't want to worry, worry about anything, you know, like do my job. Maybe try to be friends with, use all my uh, clever ideas to be friends with the, whoever the new chairman is and then just, you know, take my money and then I do it. That's the problem. So. If you are advising to tourism but this sort of a bureaucracy thing and then this favorism has to go on so uh, one solution is create think tanks you know create things that create roadmaps which you don't change according to successor so you need a proper planning in, in Chinese sort of a communist government they have this every five years they have these five-year plans so this actually has to come not just from the industry tourism board it has to come with the whoever the, uh, the government whoever the minister that we need to have a national roadmap national plan and i think if you look at all the government industry institute in sri lanka this is a common problem so these things we need powerful organization he needs to be a value editor not an enforcer and then q uh innovation uh, a chance and then the whole idea of favorism is also because we have certain uh, tourism lobbies and then we have certain pa pa politically appointed or politically favored people and then people like us who are in the SME we don't really have any lobbying power or we don't really have the uh, the political influence to do things so that is a, a big problem so uh, create think tanks Going to, I think best thing is to go into people, but people with power, they need to change their approach. If they really want to get the tourism done, they need to change their approach. And also entrepreneurship, innovation equal entrepreneurship. So uh, in a way, a lobby group will always work. It doesn't matter which country you are to protect their interest or protect their members. In a way, lobbies are good, but lobbying 
having a powerful lobbies, especially in tourism or any other industry, it doesn't be the medical union, it can be the CTB union or the bus drivers union, it's the same that they would not in a way allow a competitor or a younger competitor to come in. Again, there's nothing, not trying to say it to anybody, but this is universal truth. So that is also a, the powerful lobbies and people like us, we need to create a young tourism association. We need to create the second tier. So like even look at what Sri Lanka political is happening, that we have such a big uh, few hierarchical politicians that we are even struggling to find the next president or next prime minister. That's what happening when you have such a top end is so high, top end is so powerful. Same thing happened with uh, when Mahela Sangha and all these Tila, the big uh, cricketers left because they've not worked out the groundwork because even the lobbyists needs to understand that uh, 20 years, 10 years, you guys not gonna be here. But, uh, and then uh, you guys not gonna be here, I, I'm pretty sure that they are thinking that my sons and my uh, daughters are gonna be here and look at what happened to Sri Lanka when sons and daughters and families try to run the, the country. And then if you guys are saying that uh, that family is wrong and then your family is also wrong. So lobbying is good. It, they are doing amazing work, but lobbyists should also give the second opportunity for the, the bottom tier, the, the younger tourism leaders as us to come up. So if you wanna really develop Sri Lanka tourism in a whole sort of a holistic organic way, uh, the image building, Tourism board needs to do an image building. They need to go into the SME sector, needs to talk to the younger, the next led generation leaders. Uh, the governments needs to have a pr proper path. And then the lobbying is really good. They have achieved a lot of things, but they also need to think that they, if they really want to survive, the SME sector, which is the, the, the blood and the tears and the sweat of the tourism industry needs to survive. So if you could achieve all these and then create a sustainability, you know, sustainability is not just about environment and sustainability is all, it's a much more bigger thing, then you can improve the tourism board at uh, efficiency and also improve the whole efficiency of the tourism industry. Thank you.